Last week we talked about get your own goat and we mentioned that Jesus Christ wants us to come to him and then he wants us also to commit to him. But also when we commit to Jesus that simply means that we take up his yoke which speaks of our covenant with him. It means we pick up his burden which speaks of our purpose for him and it also means we commit our lives to constantly growing in him. It speaks about progress. So presence, purpose and progress. And as we grow in Jesus, that God brings certain things in our lives that we could not have otherwise if we wouldn't grow with Jesus. And so this week, I want us to just simply continue to talk about this goat that I did not get a chance to uh, mention to last week. And uh, before I read the verse, I heard a story of one pastor who had a patient in his church, who had a member in his church who was on a sick bed and he had a complication with his heart. And the things that they had for him was that he could not get excited and he could not get too excited in like a very short period of time or else his heart wouldn't handle it and he would have a heart attack. And what happened is he was laying at the hospital bed and the church uh, members, the relatives found out as he was laying in the hospital bed suffering with a heart problem that this man actually inherited a million dollars from some ancestors now the problem was that now how do you how do you tell him that he has a million dollars without him dying so they took the pastor and they said to the pastor pastor you have to because you're the pastor he will kind of you know not be super excited when you're going to tell him and you have to slowly break it to him like maybe ask him what would he do if he, if something would happen if he would play lottery just kind of bring him to it but don't get him excited because if he gets too excited he's gonna have a heart attack so the pastor went into the hospital he said hey, of course i can do that so the pastor came in and he decided to ask a question he said if you would have a million dollars what would you do and the man says simply i'll give it to the church the pastor had a heart attack <laughs> If you have your Bible, let's go to Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17. Just as a side note, if you have a million dollars, we will not have a heart attack in our church, okay? We will definitely, if, if you would choose to give it to the church, we're going to get really, really excited. First Ephesians chapter 1 and verse uh, 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe? According to the working of his mighty power, which worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. I want you to just say this prayer out loud after me. Say, Lord Jesus, open my heart to your word. Lord Jesus, open my heart to your spirit. Lord Jesus, open my heart to your faith. Apostle Paul in here says, he says that I pray constantly for you. And he says, this is my prayer for you. He says, I pray that God will give you a spirit of revelation and the spirit of wisdom in the knowledge of God so that the eyes of your understanding will be opened. Which simply tells us that we have eyes that are physical and we have eyes that are mental. And both of these eyes can be open and both of these eyes can be closed. We, we, we know a guy in the Bible named Bartimaeus who had physical eyes. Not, they didn't see anything but his mental eyes were open because he was able to see Jesus not just as the son of the carpenter. He was able to see Jesus as a Messiah when Pharisees who were fully equipped in the things of the law could not see Jesus as a Messiah. They only saw him as a heretic, as a blasphemer. And so it's possible to live our lives having our physical eyes open but it's also Paul says I pray that God will give you a Holy Spirit who will open your mental eyes that you will see a spiritual world and that you will see things in the spirit. So the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation opens our spiritual eyes, the eyes of our mind, the eyes of our faith. Can somebody say amen? And so you and I we have eyes. And our physical eyes see the physical world. You see the traffic, you see the pews, you see the carpet, you see the door, you see if something is in front of you so you don't trip. And because you see physically, you are able to overcome a lot of challenges, avoid a lot of hurdles and fall into a lot of traps. 
but also the world we are living in today is very spiritual world everything about this world is spiritual the world we see is a byproduct of the world that we don't see the world we don't see created the world we see the world we don't see controls the world we see the world we don't see is the world that most of our young people and our generation are extremely hungry to know about Hollywood directors and movie stars and movies in almost every theater half of the movies are about a world that you cannot see and people try to guess what this world is like how this world influences our world and how our world can influence that world and Paul is saying I pray God will give you spirit of wisdom and revelation that your eyes will be open because your eyes is naturally open to this world but he says I pray that your eyes will be open so that you will see things that are in the world you cannot see with your physical eyes I think it was this week on the Fox News there was a one pastor who testified when a big rock that fell from uh, from this certain place and it just started to go against the church and the part of the church that this rock was going to had food prepared for the homeless people and there was no way if you watched actually the video that this rock should have stopped but it rolls and rolls and actually pastor was standing there as he walks away and the rock stops few inches from the church and everybody got so speculating you know they um, started to ask him for any of you what do you think happened and the pastor told the news media and all around the United States and he said that I believe God's angel stood there and he said the rock you can come but you cannot come and touch this place because there's food for the hungry and that's it he says this world is spiritual <laughs> the world you're living in is spiritual and you can live your life seeing only naturally and not seeing spiritually you have eyes in your mind and these eyes can be open and these eyes can be closed I remember re-watching the testimony the before the service it was from yet, uh, last week's in the church of TB Joshua from Nigeria Africa when there was a little girl who uh, she's not little no more but when she was 13 years of age she had a very uh, weird dream and in that dream she saw herself committing all kinds of you know sins and she saw herself sleeping with you know some unknown man and she woke up and she was just confused after that dream and she started to have weird desires and weird feelings to do weird things and at the age of 14 she saw that one of her girlfriends in high school in school that they wear really expensive clothes and they have expensive jewelry and they seem to have a lot of money so she asked them how do you guys how do you girls make money they said oh it's pretty simple we just sleep with men and men give us money and so now that feeling that came because of she had the dream it just comes upon her so she decides to make quick money by sleeping with men and she starts to prostitute at the age of 14 and she did that for 18 years in the middle of that time while she was doing these things she was sleeping with a man who was infected with HIV and she finds out that she is infected with HIV and this spirit that now lived in her that caused her to sleep with men no matter how much money she made it was never enough and no matter how much money or things she had she was never happy and she reached the status but she was not happy and now she has a sexual transmitted disease but now she's on a mission to sleep with as many men as possible to fight them back for giving them a disease and now she wanted to not just make money but in fact more men with HIV and she slept just to bring that disease on other men and until she infected one man and uh, until she slept with one man had a child and this, this whole drama just unfolds she shares her whole story and somehow she ends up in Lagos Nigeria where she goes there for the service and in the service Holy Spirit begins to move and the things that she, it, it, in the beginning it seems she's just a prostitute making poor choices but there was a spirit behind that prostitution that made her do that and while she infected men with HIV she saw nothing wrong with that until when she was delivered from the demon and she started to testify that my eyes were open and I saw for the first time what I was doing was wrong and I'm listening to the testimony and I'm like you crazy you're there living this life I mean you're living a life that is not moral you're living a life that is crazy you're damaging people's lives and then you're on a mission to infect people with HIV and you see nothing wrong with it but that's exactly what happens when the eyes of our mind are closed we don't see spiritual world and what we see many people will do the drugs they will do these things they will find nothing wrong because the eyes of the mind are completely closed 
and we're just wandering in the dark walking through the minefield of life completely clueless taking guesses in life and Paul is saying I pray your eyes of your mind will be open so that you will see the spiritual world is real and that world affects this world and this world also affects that world these two worlds depend on each other because what we do here could affect what's going to happen there and what happens there will affect well, how we're going to do it here. Spiritual world is not just a theme for movies so they will become blockbuster in the movie theaters on Friday night. Spiritual world is real. The whole haunted house, the house on the 13th street and all of that, all of the stuff is not just simply some people came up with that. These are actually realities of people's lives that live today. Maybe the Hollywood really puts a spin and a music behind it to make you goosebumps. But the reality of life is there is a spiritual world. It exists within this world. And you have to have both eyes open. These eyes and the eyes of your mind. Where things that happen in your life, you're able to see them. See, the eyes don't create the world. Eyes help you understand the world. And Paul is not saying that I want you to create the spiritual world. He says it's already there. It's just when your eyes are open, you're able to understand and you're able to see for what it really is. Can somebody say amen? amen. And so Apostle Paul says that I pray that God will give you, your eyes will be open to the spiritual world. Your eyes will be open to the things of the spirit. And then he says so that you will know the hope of your calling. You will know the hope of your calling. And he's praying that when our eyes are open, something will begin to happen to us is that we have hope of calling. Why is it very important? And I believe it speaks of an attitude. The Holy Spirit wants us to have our eyes opened so that our attitude can be affected, our attitude can be changed. We all here have a calling. Each person has a different type of a calling, but these callings all lead to one thing, that is to bring people to Jesus and to bring glory to Jesus. Some people's callings might be in the, in the field of medicine. Some people's calling might be in the field of politics. For some people, it could be in the field of just you raising up wonderful children. For some people, it's in the area of music. For others, it's in the area of teaching. For some, it's in the area of pastoring. Every single person has an area of their calling. And the problem with calling is that when you begin your calling, you get pretty excited about it. But after a while, a calling may not seem so optimistic and so exciting and when you can start your calling you will see that it's not how you expected it to be and Paul is saying that God wants to give you open eyes so that you will have hope with your calling that means so you will do your calling with hope things will get better so that you will do your calling with hope that the best is not behind you that you will do your calling with hope that your circumstances that they're not everything that there are things behind the circumstances there's a God bigger than them and God can change those circumstances God is saying that I want your eyes to be open so that your calling requires hope so you will not just go through your calling but you will walk with your calling with hope knowing things will change why because these circumstances I am surrounded by are not the finite they're not the end they are not have the final word God has the final word and he will get me through this it's very important to know that your calling requires hope it's very important to know that you owe to your calling hope your calling demands hope. It means living your life full of optimism. You cannot have a positive life thinking negative thoughts. You cannot have a positive career speaking negative words. You cannot have a positive environment in the house feeling negative emotions. When there is no hope, a calling is on life support. A calling is struggling. A calling is simply being determined by, well, this is how my life is right now. Well, this is how things are right now. And then you let your mood and the level of your faith be determined by your surroundings. But Paul is saying, when your eyes are open, you will have hope. Not because things look hopeful, but because your, your spiritual eyes see beyond the circumstances that there is a God who is fighting for you. And he will help you to get through in Jesus name. It's important to know one thing about our God. He never calls us to a place he doesn't have victory for. God is not like King David who sent Uriah in front of the battle to secretly kill him. God does not call you to a place to kill you. 
God does not call you to a place to assassinate or to punish you. God does not secretly come and says let me kiss you Jesus on the cheek and so I can kill you and so that I could betray you to your enemies. God brings you to a place to bless you. If God brings us to us, He will bring us through it. God did not bring Israelites to the Red Sea so He can secretly drown them and say oops it happened. Not my fault. It wasn't my fault that you marched into the Red Sea. No, God does not have those secret plans. God revealed His plans. He says, I have plans for you, says the Lord. The plans for good and not for evil to give you hope and to give you future. God is not Judas. God is not King David sending secret letters says, hey go there in the front so I can get rid of you. God does not call you to defeat. That's why He says, if I call you, that means I have something good for you. You have a reason to be hopeful. Hope of calling. And if God called our church to make an impact in our city, that means God has a secret plan and that plan is for good, not for evil, to give us hope and to give us future. If God called you as a wife, you as a husband, you as a student, you as a home group leader, you must understand if God called me, He has no secret agenda to drown me or to kill me in a furnace of fire. He might burn my robes, He might burn my enemies, He might destroy the Pharaoh, but He's not going to destroy me because God has a good plan for my life. Can somebody say amen? I really want you to believe that God has no secret agenda. If he does have a secret motive and that is to bless you. Because if we don't believe that in the deepest part of our heart, we will be convinced along the way in life that God is trying to kill you. Israel was when they faced a Red Sea and the Pharaoh ran behind them. They looked at Moses and they said, was there not enough graves in Egypt? Why didn't we die as slaves? Why did you bring us here to kill us here? When there was no food in the wilderness, they looked at Moses and they said, why didn't you kill us at the Red Sea? Why are you killing us here with a famine? Because secretly they believed that if God calls, He has a secret agenda to get rid of you. But God never ever had even the slightest ounce of a secret agenda to destroy you. When He brings you to it, He promises to bring you through it. You know God blessed us with this building. God has done, if God would ever want our church not to exist, He would have not allowed it to start 10 years ago. If God would not want you to make it through life, He would not allow you to survive when you came out of your mother's womb. He would not allow you to survive the accident or maybe even overdose or the things that you had, the attacks that you had. If God see you through that, even in this period of your life, you gotta have hope. If He called me, He called me for something good. He has no secret agenda to destroy me, punish me or bury me. Oh yes, he might bury the things that haunt me and walk behind me. He might destroy the robes that bound me. But God has no agenda to destroy my life. John 10.10 10 says, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. But I come to give you life and more abundantly. There's only one person who wants to secretly destroy you. And that person is Satan, demons and the devil and the sin. It's not the Lord Jesus Christ. You may be in a situation today that doesn't look hopeful. The sea turtles always really encourage me because sea turtles, you know that they actually are born. The eggs are placed in the sand. They're buried deep in the sand. When we were in uh, Cancun, Mexico, we saw, uh, we saw the eggs of the, was the sea turtles. Yeah. It was a protected place. And these little sea turtles, they were there in the sand. And when they come out, they see only sand around them. They're called for the water but they are born in the sand and the interesting part is how the small sea turtles when they come out from the sand they immediately begin to look for water and they don't settle for the sand though they're born in the sand and everything they see is sand. You must understand that your location is not indication of your destiny. Where you are at today might be sand. Maybe you grew up in the sand. Everybody in the house only talks sand, looks sand, lives sand. But you must understand as a child of God, you are not a sand person. You are destined to go into the water. You are destined for the good things and therefore you must never settle for where you are at. Why? Because your God has a plan for your life. Your God has a plan for my life. Maybe everybody in the family is divorced. It's sand. Maybe everybody in the family has diabetes and arthritis. It's sand. Maybe everybody in the family cannot finish what they start. It's sand. 
but remember you're not destined for the sand you were born in the sand but destined for the water and therefore slowly begin to crawl out of that sand and begin to walk toward what you're destined for hope of your calling God calls you and if he calls you he has a hope for you can somebody say amen and I was really encouraged um, this week by a testimony of a lady who who had a, actually a uh, this problem her stomach swollen really huge and they found there was a lot of water in her stomach and they would drain her stomach of water and the fast the moment they drain it out of the water the water would just come up again and she just had really really big problems because of that people started to make fun of her say you're pregnant when she wasn't and her stomach as you see on the picture it's it's not doesn't look like a stomach of a, we have pregnant ladies in here today but this it does not look like pregnancy this looks like and it does not look like obesity or overweight this this looks just abnormal she her life turned into hell she was not able to walk nowhere because of her condition she's a young woman she comes to the church of prophet tb joshua receives prayer comes back and she feels like you know things gotten better and they drained you know the water but the water came back up again until she goes to the doctor one more time and they find out actually in that water she also has a baby that's eight months old and they said there is no way you'll be able to give birth to a baby with this situation and so they begin to try to drain the water keeps coming back drain the water keeps coming back and, and now she has an eight month year old baby in her womb that she was not aware of well the time comes for the delivery the baby comes out all the water comes out and the water never comes back again and the baby is healthy she brings the baby and she says you know what and she calls the baby Emmanuel miracle no better name for the baby that lived in the water for nine months and came out and the water did not come back but see but this is what this woman was convinced of God called me to be a mother God did not call me to die and God did not call the baby inside of me to die and God did not call me to walk with a stomach that looks like a semi truck God called me to be a mother and with that calling there is hope if you have a calling from God on your life you must be convinced of one thing God never calls people to get rid of them God calls people to bless them and so I have to live with hope every single day I might not see you today I might not see you tomorrow but I live with hope that if he called me he has a good plan for my life can somebody say amen, amen. say if God called me he has a good plan for my life say if he brought me to it he will bring me through it in Jesus name and Paul says that I want you to know the hope of your calling but then he goes on and he gives us a second thing is that he says I also want you to know of the inheritance of Jesus the glory the riches of the glory of the inheritance of Jesus that is in you that means Apostle Paul is writing he says I want your eyes to be open so that you will see your calling God is not trying to kill you God is going to bless you God is going to get you through but he says I also want you to know not only that you have hope you have good things in your future you have good things around you but I want you to know the things that are available to you in Christ an inheritance of Jesus now we knew that Jesus on this earth was not a Bill Gates or Warren Buffett when Jesus passed when Jesus died and he was hanging on the cross the Bible says he did not have much property Jesus did not own half of Middle East he wasn't an oil cocoon where he owned you know rich wealth and all of the members of Jesus' church get a little portion of oil that's not Jesus had clothes and the Bible says the clothes disciples didn't even take them the soldiers gambled them and took them the scripture man says Jesus had a house but we don't know what happened to the house most likely it did not get passed on and left to Peter or to John so it says Jesus had an inheritance now it's different if we say Bill Gates inheritance lives in you we could probably get happy if we say uh, Warren Buffett's inheritance lives in you but it says Jesus's inheritance you read the Gospels he was like well Jesus did not have much he didn't even prepare for his own grave they had to borrow he went from the borrowed womb to the borrowed tomb Jesus borrowed things he just went through life he didn't have anything of his own you're like well that is not very comforting he didn't have much so does that mean I won't have much either no I think the inheritance the Bible talks about that Jesus had and he leaves unto us is far greater than the piece of steel and a horse or a house or a bunch of sheep or goats it talks about something that is a lot more powerful and a lot more greater yes it talks about spiritual inheritance in heaven 
The Bible says we have inheritance in heaven. And sometimes people don't underestimate, we underestimate how valuable this inheritance is. It takes, the, I read the statistics today, that it takes actually about $50,000 to replace your kidney. To replace your heart, it takes about $100,000. To replace one of your lungs, to have a surgery to replace, have your lung replaced, it takes $150,000. To replace bone marrow, it takes $190,000. To replace a liver, it takes a half of a million dollars. Imagine you ending up in heaven and God gives you a brand new liver, brand new heart, brand new bone marrow, everything new. And God says, you come into heaven, you're paying zero. Now that's big inheritance. We don't think about that sometimes. For, for us to send a person into the moon, into the, into the space, it takes at least 40 billion dollars. Imagine God is going to escort you into heaven for free. Not with some kind of a spaceship. Angels. Heaven's limo service. Will pick you up and take you there all free of charge. God is not going to give you on a mortgage and then for the rest of the heaven you're going to be paying it off monthly on interest no this is completely free and so this is so amazing that in heaven this beautiful inheritance if you ever build a home or bought a home you realize nice homes are expensive the bible says in heaven you will live in the nicest home not made out of concrete or asphalt or granite gold all of that what free charge now that's amazing but our inheritance is not only in heaven the bible says that this inheritance lives in us paul says right now and the reason why we need the eyes of the spirit is so that we can see what is available to us today last week i mentioned in the message that jesus says come to me i will give you rest he says walk with me take my yoke take my burden and you will find rest come i give it to you you work with me live with me and you will find the rest and when you read that in the beginning it's as though it seems like Jesus says if you stay with me you won't have the benefit of me giving you things but you will have things available to you that you on your own will begin to take it's almost similar to the story of the father gave his inheritance to two sons and the youngest son he was kind of bold one he took all of the inheritance that belonged to him ran into another country squandered it with prostitutes just just went partying gambled it at the casino i mean drink the drugs they just just wasted it and the older son he kept it and he worked with the father he carried the yoke carried the burden he learned from the father he worked with the father and the younger son comes back and daddy takes the goat slaughters the goat prepares the goat for him the older son comes in and says dad you never gave me a goat and dad looks at him he says yeah of course I didn't because I gave you the full inheritance and I've been kind of watching looking when are you gonna get your own goat see it's good when you are a child your parents give you milk your mom not your parents but your mom gives you milk from her breast and that is awesome you don't have to do anything just ah boom you got milk right there but then comes a point where your mama stops giving you milk and if she continues to do that that is not good for you but she doesn't give you milk no more what she does is she puts food in the refrigerator and then you have to get up from your blessed assurance Jesus is mine couch and actually go to the refrigerator and take the food that she has available for you so what God is saying to us is that when you come to Jesus he gives you a goat but when you begin to stay with Jesus he reveals to you of things that are available to you and it's up to you to begin to take them by faith yeah the Bible says God feeds the birds of the air I've never seen once a bird open the mouth and God from heaven sends food how does God feed the birds of the air he places food within their reach and he expects them to use their little legs that he gave them to move and to find that food God wants you to know as a Christian he makes things available and that's why we come to church to know what is available to me in Jesus is healing available for me is deliverance available for me is having a good marriage available for me is having God's blessing on my finances available to me is having a good night's sleep available to me 
is having these things if they are available and after you find out you don't just sit and cry and wait for daddy to come and give it to you you say Lord thank you that this is available and now Holy Spirit help me how to appropriate how to open the refrigerator and begin to apply of the things that have been freely given to me through Jesus Christ walk in me Jesus says take my yoke and you will find you will be so mature as not to just expect for me to give you a goat you go find your own goat that's been given to you freely through the inheritance and you will prepare it for yourself Amen. nothing is worse than when people live the all of their Christian life always expecting everyone to constantly get them out of the problems I listened to Joyce Meyer's testimony today when her brother died as a homeless man and she shared how her brother went to military and he had a really rough experience there he came back and he really just just really had a rough life and so Joyce Meyer and her husband decided to help her brother they took him into their house into her house um, he already was divorced uh, lost his children he owed so much money to the IRS owed so much money to the uh, not IRS to, to the because of his children and so child support and so many things they put him on the staff in the church he was traveling with them they gave him money they helped him with everything but one thing that their brother her brother did not want to do is he did not want to take charge of his life until after being with her for a few, few years they bought him they rented him a nice place, they bought him a truck, gave him everything that he needed so he will start his life. He only did it for a few months and after that he went back into just living the way he lived before. Abusing drugs, doing all of these things. They put him into a rehab center, one of the best rehab centers in the United States, the Dream Center. I mean they connected him personally, they paid, they did everything they could. He would go to the rehab center, spend there for three weeks, after that just live, keep going back. And this is what she said. She says, at the end of the day, you can't help somebody who refuses to help themselves. There comes a point where the milk is done and you have to learn to begin to like Jesus says you take my yoke you begin to seek and take the rest for yourself we need to be helped every time but we must understand when you begin to take action for your life and you begin to say you know what I got my life into this mess and I will slowly begin to get it out people come around you they begin to help you the Lord begins to help you in Egypt God did miracles to destroy Egyptian tyranny empire but in the promised land God didn't do that. God just empowered the Israelites as they would go and possess and take what was theirs. That's why Paul says it's time to grow out of milk and to eat meat. You know what difference between meat and milk? Milk is what's given to you. Meat is what you have to go in the forest, take and bring back home. There's um I think it's a familiar story that I think we've shared a few times in our church. Uh, there was this guy, his name is um, Colin O'Reilly. A few centuries ago, he was immigrating to the United States. From uh, He was an Irish poor man. He heard of this opportunity to come to the United States. And so he decided to jump on it. And one of his friends actually, one of his friends actually purchased him a ticket. And this ticket included that she will, he would be able to sail through uh, the ocean and come to the United States. And because this... Colin O'Reilly he did not have enough funds he decided to just buy himself a little bit of bread and a little bit of food so it could last him through the voyage and so that he could last him a few days in the United States before he finds a job and finds some food as he was there and you know eating in his own uh, in his own room and on the last day before he before the ship landed one of the gentlemen asked him if he could have a dinner with him in a restaurant on the ship and so this gentleman says I would love to join you in the restaurant in the ship the only problem is that I'm very poor I'm from uh, I'm an Irish man and I just don't have enough money my friends bought me a ticket I'm looking forward to a new life in the United States and I have very little bread left and I have to kind of not eat too much so that it could last me a few more days when I land in America and the man looked with a surprising look looks at him and he says did you not know that all of the meals and all of the restaurants three times a day were included in your ticket and here he lives on a little bit of bread, not knowing all of these were available to him. Holy Spirit wants to let you know what is available to you. That you don't have to live sick. That you don't have to live broke. You don't have to live cursed. That you don't have to hear voices at night. Now you may not get all of that right away. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers him out of them all. It doesn't say out of them few. 
out of the major ones out of the ones that the, the doctors can't help but the rest of them he has to suffer to learn a character the bible says the lord delivers the righteous man out of all of his afflictions it may not happen in one day it may not happen at the same time it may not all of them at the same time it might not happen at the same way the lord will deliver them sometimes he will deliver one affliction at here and other times he will deliver it when you read the bible but you must understand what's available to you is that every affliction you can have as a righteous person god has the power to deliver you from if it's an addiction if it's some kind of a habit if it's some kind of a thing that you're stuck in whatever it is the lord delivers the righteous man out of all of his afflictions you have to know what's available to you you have to be convinced to know what's available to you as a Christian your attitude has to be as a Christian that I have hope for my calling but I know what's available and I refuse to live on pieces of crumbs just hoping one day when I get to heaven and a sweet by and by and that's when everything's gonna be finished no on this earth today the Lord delivers me out of all of my afflictions in Jesus mighty name can somebody say amen you know there was a there was a mother they had a child I think this child was 10 years of age and this child has swallowed piece of metal in his body and there was actually a picture of this this piece of metal that was stuck in his body and so what happened is that as you could see on this screen over here is there was a piece of metal that well, this child swallowed and it was there in his body they did a scan they found it but there was no way they could remove this piece of metal they had to do a surgery on this child because the 10 year old child swallowed a piece of metal it's not going nowhere and it's going to be really bad for the body and so before going to the surgery the, mo the mother realized that in Jesus there is not just salvation for heaven but in Jesus there's practical help for every trouble and affliction of life can somebody say amen sometimes we think in Jesus it's just an emotional strength it's just you know to feel emotionally good maybe feathers from heaven a few golden dust and all of this is great but here is a piece of metal in the body and a mother who knows in Jesus help is available she takes the anointing sticker anointing sticker is just a piece of paper that prophet T.B. Joshua prayed for and as a contact she places on the hands of the uh, on the stomach of the baby and says Lord Jesus I know that you can use the doctors to remove this but I also know that you can supernaturally get your hand into this body and either melt this piece or let it flush out and come out and I pray in Jesus name that your mercy and your favor will speak for him right now the moment she finishes praying the little boy says mommy I want to go poo poo and this is what the little baby poo poo out and piece of metal without hurting the base the boy's body just flushed out and came out and no surgery What's available in Jesus today is that he's able to deliver us from all of our afflictions whether they're small or they're big gee maybe not right away maybe not all right now not all the same way but not every afflict every affliction that you have in your life the Lord is able to deliver you in Jesus name can somebody say amen every affliction that God wants to deliver you from in Jesus name and Paul finishes the by saying not only the Lord wants us to have knowledge of what's available but he also says that he wants us to know the power that is available to deliver us from these things the power that is available and it speaks to me this speaks of action to me this speaks of that I have to take action that I don't just simply know what Jesus did on the cross for me but I have to take action you have to understand that God's power lays dormant if it's not acted upon the Lord's power must be acted upon these promises that I've mentioned and these things that God can do they have to spur your faith not just to wishful thinking but so that you will sit and say if God can do it for this person God can do it for me this has to stir your faith to say that if Jesus says that I can seek and I will find then I must do that I must fight for it and I must believe for it in my own life for the glory of God. Jesus says, the Bible says that Holy Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead, that this power, that this power is also available to us. Why is this very important? Because, because this power helps us to receive what we see is available for us. Sometimes it's like that. You can put that picture of a Spurgeon, the old man. Sometimes this, this preacher who's called the Prince of Preachers, he had a nurse in his, in his church 
and this particular nurse took care of elderly people she was very good at it and she was very kind to people very nice to people one particular person she was taking care of after he was already about to go into the other world and pass away he said to her he says you've been very kind to me you've been very good to me and I want to leave you something he hands her a legal paper and says I just wanted to give you this note and I just wanted to bless you you've been so kind to me and this particular lady she feels very blessed by it so she takes this paper goes into um, a picture frame store and asks if they could put this paper into a picture frame and she hangs that in front of her wall and she always carried that because that was like a special emotional connection to this person whom she helped for a long time in her life she's on her own deathbed and Charles Spurgeon comes to her to minister to her and prepare her to meet the Lord as he is there he notices how poor she is and how difficult and challenging her life is and his eyes gaze at the picture frame on in that room and he comes to the picture frame and he reads that this woman was given millions of dollars of estate from this wealthy man because she took care of him he comes to her and he says did you know what this is she says oh yes this is a very precious note from the person I took over he says oh yes it's very precious but you don't honor this man or his note by putting it in a frame on the wall he says the way you honor the man is that if you will take this note and not put it in a frame but go get a lawyer go to the bank and you will cash the inheritance out for your life I wonder how many times we as Christians live like that too how many times Jesus put it in his testament called the Bible the will and he left us those things and we read it polish it memorize it but many times that's all that we do but not act on it and say Lord you said it it settles it and I will not live beyond what this word has promised to my life I really want to challenge you today the best way to honor the inheritance Jesus left us is not to even preach about it but it's to apply it walk it out begin to take it by faith begin to apply it in your life for the glory of God and God by that will be glorified and that happens through his power that happens when his power is involved when we begin to act based on his power it doesn't just happen because well I believe it no but you say I believe it and the Lord is gonna back it up in Jesus name every single service this is that moment where we do that there was a lady that came to our church his name is her name is Bariki Yorka she came last year for prayer line here with the anointing water and some of you you remember her the demon was tormenting her life it came in the form of a spiritual husband and it caused a lot of disappointments in her life but she knew that Jesus promised to live for me to live a better life and to be tormented by demons also she had ovarian cyst and a fibroids and she was not able to have children for 10 years with her husband as she was here you know she came from another state she paid a price to be here she didn't just wait for the Lord to heal her no she said I'm gonna go do everything it takes and I'm gonna take what God has promised for me I'm gonna fast I'm gonna pray I'm gonna book a hotel I'm gonna get a transit here and I'm gonna go I can't go to Africa but I can come to Washington State and she says I am gonna just because these things are available I lived for 10 years with this but I don't want next 10 years to be like this and I am gonna take this testament and this will off of the wall and I'm gonna try my best to see it work you know what and the Lord met her at the point of her need because in here she was delivered from the spirit that was causing the torment and last month she delivered a healthy baby boy after 10 years of not having children nothing is impossible to our God can somebody say amen? amen nothing is impossible to our God in Jesus name things that are available in him we got to take action we got to go after it and we will have it if Bariki Yorka had it you can have it I can have it my family can have it my finances can have it my health can have it many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivers him out of them all I declare over your life today the Lord's gonna deliver you out of all of your afflictions in Jesus name the Lord's gonna deliver you out of the afflictions today in Jesus name this week in Jesus name that God is gonna open the doors and that you will not settle to live in the sand because you're meant for the water for the glory of Jesus Christ can somebody say amen do you receive this message today in Jesus name amen